Did you know the story of Jesus who loves you? Jesus who died for you, Jesus can save you. Did you know that he's the one, son of the one God, son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake. I want to live a life so I hear him say, well done, my child, enter in. Welcome, everyone, to the International Gospel Hour television broadcast. I'm Jeff Archie. In the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, a time that Jeremiah is writing, lamenting the sadness of Jerusalem, about halfway through that book, in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, he reminds us of the compassions of the Lord. They are new every morning. Even in the midst of all their struggles, the compassions of the Lord remain. How about 2 Corinthians 5, 17? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's something about things that are new and brand new that we love. We love the smell of a new car, a new house. And isn't it wonderful that things remain new in Christ Jesus? 2 Corinthians 4 reminds us that though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Let's talk about some things that are new. Today, this is what we would call the pilot broadcast of the International Gospel Hour television program. Thank you for being with us and for being with us at a key part in the history of the International Gospel Hour. Now, like all pilot broadcasts where you're introduced to the characters and the plots and everything, I want to let you know, first of all, what you will expect when you tune in to our broadcast. First of all, we will have a moment such as this when we begin that we call our Highlights segment. And you'll notice Highlights will be spelled a little differently with capital I-G-H for International Gospel Hour. What I wish to do is share with you some things that I come across from our co-workers in the kingdom that I will be talking with you about good works from such works as kyopublications.org. HouseToHouse.com, our friends at Apologetics Press and other places, to share with you some things of a biblical nature, of brief intro and study, and to let you know about their good works that you may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now also, we want to think about some other things. You'll come back later in our broadcast, which we will do today for what we call our Search the Scriptures time, to where we will study the Scriptures together and help us in searching and understanding God's will. And then we're going to have what we call a final segment of Handling the Word of Truth. And this, of course, is taken from 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. And we'll enlighten you on those in just a moment. But first, Bear with me for this little lengthier highlight segment as we talk about some of the history of the International Gospel Hour. In 1934, radio was in its infancy. A young gospel preacher by the name of V.E. Howard went to a nearby radio station in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where he was preaching. KTHS was the station. And Brother Howard went in and talked with them about a radio program. Now again, keep in mind, radio is still relatively new, but Brother Howard saw it as an opportunity to reach the masses. The station manager did not think it would go over very well, so Brother Howard worked a, an agreement with him to give him a try, and if it didn't work, then we'll just throw the whole idea out. Well, dear friends, for the past 87 years, it's been working. V.E. Howard was a visionary and saw the power of radio and used radio in his preaching and could reach the multitudes. KTHS 
was a very strong station at that time that got a lot of signal out over the airways and had a long reach. KTHS eventually became KAAY in Little Rock, and we continue to be on that station to this day. Brother Howard continued to be the host of the broadcast and the speaker for about 60 years. And then in about 1993, 1994, due to Brother Howard's health, the late Brother Winford Claiborne stepped in, and for 20 years, Brother Claiborne was the speaker. When Brother Claiborne began the program, something else new came along called the Internet. And through his work and others that joined him, such as V.E. Skipper and David Sane and others that would work with Brother Winford, he was able to use the Internet to reach countless millions worldwide. And so through the power of radio and through the power of the Internet, Brother Claiborne continued about another 20 years as the speaker. A lot of people know Brother Claiborne. A lot of people loved Brother Claiborne and appreciated his good work. But then as time continued on, Brother Claiborne was unable to continue the work. And about 2013 or so, Jody Apple was asked to come and to take the world, to take the role, if you will, as speaker of the International Gospel Hour. Jody was able to advance our work more into the realm of social media. He was also able to work opportunities that we could be on a number of radio stations at a better price. And so a lot of Jody's work opened the doors for us as well. And so what you have when you look back over the history of the International Gospel Hour, you find where Brother Howard saw the power of radio. And then as Brother Claiborne took over, he saw the power of the Internet. And then as Brother Apple took over, he saw the opportunity of social media and other avenues as well. And now we come to this day. Chuck Richardson is our video producer, or rather our audio producer, of our radio broadcast. Chuck shared with me that Brother Howard had long desired to have a television program, but the doors had not quite opened as of yet. Brother Claiborne was looking at doing the International Gospel Hour program, but that door did not open other than segments that we have on our YouTube channel, courtesy of our good friends at the Gospel Broadcasting Network and Good News Today. They are segments that aired on the Good News Today broadcast, and we're thankful that we can share those on our YouTube channel as part of the history of International Gospel Hour. Brother Apple's work put us in a lot of good areas, but he also was serving the Southeast Institute of Biblical Studies as an instructor and also preaching. And so the doors of television weekly broadcast had not opened. But today, they have opened. And you are with us as we begin this journey together. Now, you'll still hear us on the radio. You'll still hear us over the Internet. You'll still, still, if you will, rather, hear us on other broadcasts or other opportunities, such as through podcast platforms. But you can also now see us live, see us here, as we will broadcast, Lord willing, weekly, here in this avenue of which you are viewing our program. We are excited about the opportunities for the International Gospel Hour TV program. I want to give you just a little bit of our history and to share with you that throughout our broadcast, you'll be hearing about what we offer for our viewers absolutely free. We'd like to present to you studies within our broadcast and then afterward to give you some opportunities to where you can go and learn more about our work and see a lot of the other things that we offer. So you'll hear the voice of Daniel Howell. Daniel is our announcer. You'll hear his voice, and he'll share with you those things throughout our broadcast today. So with that in mind, I'll be back in just a moment with our first study of our Search the Scriptures segment, 
But before we do that, here is our Daniel Howell to tell you a little bit more about our work at International Gospel Hour. Did you know almost half of the global population has a smartphone? At the touch of a finger, you can access the International Gospel Hour by downloading our app absolutely free. You'll have access to our website, social media, podcast option, our YouTube channel, and other resources, all by the touch of your finger in the palm of your hand. Please download our app on your smartphone device today. It's absolutely free from International Gospel Hour. Let's search the Scriptures. Jesus said in John 5, 39, Search the Scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. In Acts 17, verses 10 and 11, we learn about those in the city of Berea. The Bible says they were more noble or fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, and here's why. They received the Word with readiness of mind and searched the Scriptures daily whether those things were so. Let's encourage us to search the Scriptures, not only here, but anytime we come across something, let's search the Scriptures to see God's answers. When we consider with me today, let's consider 1 Chronicles 16, verses 8 through 12. I love this prayer of David. A prayer that says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing psalms to Him. Talk of all His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face evermore. Remember His marvelous works which He has done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. Now highlight this text with me for a moment, folks. Give thanks to the Lord. What a beautiful way to begin a prayer of praise. You may not recognize his name, but I called him Ernie. Ernie told me one time, actually he made the comment in a Bible class, that before he went to the Lord in prayer to request things. He had to pause and thank the Lord for what all he had and what God had given him. To begin our prayer with thanksgiving unto the Lord, calling upon His name, recognizing His power, and then as we do that, we can't help but to make known what He has done. When we sing, when we talk, we glory in His name. We rejoice for those who seek the Lord. Dear friends, I would encourage you and I to seek the Lord and His strength, just like this prayer says. Seek His face evermore. And then take a look. Wonderful works. Marvelous works. What a wonderful, beautiful thought of the wonderful, marvelous works of God. What a prayer. What great praise that you and I find here in this passage of 1 Chronicles 16, 8 through 12. Now, let's take that over to the New Testament and consider with me Acts the second chapter. In Acts the second chapter, thousands had assembled up on Jerusalem on Pentecost. They were coming as Jews and proselytes but a lot of them were going home as disciples of Christ. On the day of Pentecost, when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, they started preaching and teaching in the languages of all those nations that had assembled together. Acts 2, 9-11 through tells us, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. The conclusion, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And the wonderful works of God proclaimed Jesus Christ, whom they had crucified. 
It proclaimed the risen Christ. And on the day of Pentecost, they heard the wonderful works of God proclaimed. They heard the gospel preached. They heard the words of Peter and the apostles as they preached what Christ commanded them to preach in the Great Commission passage such as Luke 24, 44 through 49, that the word of the Lord would go forth from Jerusalem and they were standing right there preaching it. And the wonderful works of God went onward and the wonderful works of God were proclaimed. Also notice that they began to preach going back to what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. That Joel in Joel chapter 2 spoke of whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear friends, that's what Peter preached in Acts 2 verse 21. And then he began to teach them about the Lord of whom they would call upon. Several years ago while attending a tent meeting, I heard the late Bill Hatcher put it this way. He came to verse 37 upon the preaching of that day, and they asked the question, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Call upon the name of the Lord. But what must we do? Call upon the name of the Lord. But what must we do? Call upon the name of the Lord. But what did that mean? Well, the question asked in verse 37 is the answer coming in verse 38. Repent ye therefore, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, that's what they did to call upon the name of the Lord. You see, calling upon the name of the Lord is not just a calling out uh, for example, in Matthew 7, verse 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that will do the will of my Father which is in heaven. Do you suppose on the day of Pentecost that those individuals that assembled called upon the name of the Lord when Peter told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you? Is that what they did? Well, according to Acts 2.41, yes that as many as received his word were baptized, and that same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They called upon the name of the Lord when they responded in obedience to his will. Now, folks, that may catch a lot of people off guard. It eliminates what many call the sinner's prayer, which cannot be found in Scripture. That day on the day of Pentecost, they were not asked to pray the sinner's prayer. They were told to repent and to be baptized, every one of them, in the name of Christ for the remission of their sins. That's how they called on the name of the Lord. Now, watch. Allow the Apostle Paul to tell more. In Acts, the 22nd chapter, in verse 16, now the Apostle Paul is telling of his conversion when he was Saul. And he says in Acts twenty two sixteen 16 that Ananias looked at him and said, Saul, the old King James Version, why tarriest thou? But Saul, why do you wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, Let's ask a question. When did Paul call upon the name of the Lord? When he arose and he was baptized and his sins were washed away. Just like on the day of Pentecost, when they were baptized for the remission of sins, context of what Peter preached, they called upon the name of the Lord. That's a wonderful work that God does in man. He redeems man when man is obedient to his will. And dear friends, we learn this when we search the Scriptures. We'll be back in a moment, but now, once again, our Daniel Howell. Our website is internationalgospelhour.com. 
That's internationalgospelhour.com. Please check it out and listen to our other broadcasts, learn more of our history, download our app, request our free newsletter, and free Bible study. Also, check out our free resources available from our fellow laborers in the gospel. Yes, friends, all for you through our website at internationalgospelhour.com. And now we're coming to the segment that I like to call Handling the Word of Truth. We highlight some good things for your study, then we search the Scriptures together for our application, but we need to handle the Word of Truth aright. We need to be able to rightly divide, because what we learn, we want to be able to tell others. In other words, we're going to edify ourselves where we can be evangelistic to others. This segment comes from 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15, to study to show ourselves approved unto God, or to give diligence to approve ourselves unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or handling the word of truth. In other words, rightly dividing or handling it in a proper way, to be able for you and I to use this in a good way. Think about it, dear friends. You and I never want to misrepresent what God says. You and I never want to take anything out of a context. We want to make things as sure as we can. And are we not grateful that God has provided us His Word, His thoughts, that we have to help us to handle the word of truth clearly. I mentioned moments ago about the day of Pentecost and how there were those that were baptized and added to the number there about 3,000 souls. Let's talk about that great day, and I want us to go back to the New Testament to Matthew, the 16th chapter, in verse 18. On the coast of Caesarea Philippi, there we have the apostles, Jesus Christ. Jesus asked them a question about verse 13, Who do men say that I am? It's been said in the study of that text that Jesus is saying, Who do the common man, the common individual, the everyday person, who do they say that I am? Well, some say you are Elias, some say you are Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And then Jesus said, Whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. Jesus praised him and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then we come to verse 18, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, when he says to Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, sometimes it's been said that Peter is the rock on whom Christ built the church. But when you take a look at Peter's name, which means Cephas or a stone, going back to John 1, 40 through 42, right there you get the idea that Peter's name means a stone or a pebble, something small. When Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, Jesus is talking of the solid bedrock that he and he only is the Son of God. That word rock there is a word that is similar to the stone that was rolled in front of his tomb. Massive size. Upon this rock, the solid foundation, I will build my church. I will build people who are the called out. I will build people who will assemble for me. And on the day of Pentecost, individuals were added to the church. Acts 2.47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. May I ask you a question? What denomination were they added? The Bible doesn't say. It says that they were added to the church. Now let me ask you a question, dear friends. If I take the Bible and the Bible only, and I look at the church in the New Testament, and I do what they did, can I be certain 
that God will do for me what He said He would do, without a doubt. You know, you can be a member of the church we read of in the New Testament and not be a member of a denomination. Those on the day of Pentecost did. The churches that are listed throughout the New Testament did. They were not added to any denominational body. They were simply added to the church. Dear friends, here on our broadcast of the International Gospel Hour, we're going to talk about the church of our Lord. We're going to talk about the blessings of salvation in Christ. We're going to talk about His wondrous works. And what a joy to look and to see of these texts that Jesus said, I will build my church. Would you not love to know more about the church that we read of in the New Testament? I am sure that you would. And dear friends, when we look at the church in the New Testament, God teaches what we are to do to be saved, and He instructs what will keep us saved that we can walk in the light as He is in the light, having fellowship one with another, knowing the blood of Jesus Christ His Son will cleanse us from all sin. 1 John 1 verse 7. Confessing our sins and praying that we'll be forgiven and that we will be forgiven. 1 John 1 9. The advocate that we have through God, through Jesus Christ unto God. 1 John 2 verse 1. Dear friends, what a joy to see that we can be part of the church we read of in the New Testament. And that is the church of which we will advocate to this very day and other broadcast here on our work at International Gospel Hour. We hope that you will take these scriptures that we search and handle them aright. That is our aim and that is our plea. Back in a few moments. The International Gospel Hour offers a free Bible study course by mail. Study at home and at your pace. Please call toll-free at 1-855-IGH-6988 and leave your name, address, and just say, Home Study. You may also go to our website at internationalgospelhour.com, click on the Contact tab, and again, leave your name, address, and type, Home Study. We'll send it right away. Thank you for joining us for what we hope will be the first of many TV broadcasts from the International Gospel Hour. We praise God for His marvelous works and praise Christ for His church. And dear friends, we are excited. Check out the things Daniel shared with you. And Lord willing, we'll see you next time here on International Gospel Hour. Did you know that he's the one, son of the one God, son of the living God, Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake, I want to live a life so I hear him say, well done my child, enter in.